The SEER specialists uh, cater the training based off of what the local environment is or what the environment is that you could expect to employ in combat. For instance, for those going into CENTCOM, they're going to try to uh, tailor the training a little bit more towards a desert arid environment. However, for local survival training, should we eject somewhere locally here in Japan or in Korea, the training will be tailored towards the environment there of what type of uh, plants and animals we can encounter, how to acquire water, and then ultimately how to get picked up and how to get rescued. For this region, it's definitely plant identification, trying to find your way towards the friendly forces, be those local Japanese nationals. So what we train them to do is uh, conceal any sign that they were at any one location and then move as quickly away from that location as possible. So anybody coming to try to find them, now they have a longer time that they can get away from that person. So if they put enough time between them and the enemy, they can hopefully uh, evade capture at that point in time. As an evader on the ground, prior to being recovered, they've been down for quite some time. There's been people that have been down for weeks on the ground evading, that's back in like Vietnam. Uh, nowadays, they're able to be recovered a little bit quicker, uh, depending on the location, so long as they're able to evade uh, any hostile force. Uh, we're able to get to them faster with the modern technology that we have. So we covered primarily survival and evasion, and we took uh, the pilots out to the field so that they could get hands-on application and practice of uh, surviving and evading any enemy or hostile force that is trying to find them. I think the Air Force and again our SEER specialists provided us with some excellent training uh, and I feel confident that should I have the unfortunate opportunity to eject out of the aircraft in whatever environment I would feel pretty confident I would be able to uh, get my way out of there and or survive and do well. So we always train them so that they can come back to their families without becoming a casualty of essentially a war or even any type of training that they do. So we want to make sure that if they're flying and they go down, they have the proper training and tools so that they can return with honor. So you definitely need to have the will to survive. If you don't have a positive mental attitude out there, you're definitely going to run into a lot of trouble. And then you need to get on your radio and you need to signal recovery. If we don't know where you are, then we can't come and get you. I think SEER is a, at least from a pilot's perspective, a fascinating career field. Every SEER professional I've met is truly a professional. Their efforts in trying to stay up to speed on tactics, techniques, and procedures to provide us with the best training we can is nothing short of extraordinary in my mind. They're always looking for new devices and new things they can put in our sea kits, our survival kits. They're looking for new uh, techniques on combatives or how to resist or how to evade. And they're constantly looking at the, the threat environment that exists out there, where we could eject, and who could be the friendlies, who are the enemy, and how we can best get out of there and to use their term, return with honor and get back to home.